And the purpose of being in here is because of transit. If you haven't been paying attention, or maybe you missed it, last week, Andrew Huang partnered up with Baby Audio to release a multi-effects plugin called Transit. Now, a couple of my subscribers mentioned they were going to try and do something like this in Reason. The other one mentioned that uh, you don't necessarily need it. Uh, there's already a, pr a plugin called Tornado that does a very similar thing. And dare I say, Tornado looks like it's probably more powerful than uh, Transit. Transit is definitely the easiest of the bunch to use, though, I would say. But say you don't want prepackaged. Say you want control. Say the uh, simple four knob format of their reverbs and delays and such in transit aren't enough for you and you want a lot more control well how do you get that it's pretty easy if you've got reason now a lot of people look at reason and they think it's an old DAW, it's not that you know, powerful, blah, blah, blah. Reason is very much a secret weapon in a lot of ways, and this is one of them. One of the things Reason can do that no other DAW has been able to do, in my experience anyway, is allow you to create your own essentially effects and synthesizers within the DAW. And those synthesizers and effects can be packaged up into what are called combinators, and with the combinator, you then have the ability to modify that or distribute it to friends, whatever. And it becomes a, it's a very powerful feature. Reason is not just a DAW. It's a sound design toolkit. It, it's such a Swiss army knife that it, if you haven't used it, I really encourage you to take a look at it again, because it is really way more powerful than most people give it credit for. Now, in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to build your own multi effects processor in reason, add it to the entire track so that it overlays the entire track as it did uh, or as it's been used in uh, many of the demos I've seen of transit or you can apply it to a single track, or you can apply it as an insert effect. There are so many ways to use this, it's crazy. Not to mention, aside from the fact that you can use it in Reason, you can, because Reason is now available to be used as a plugin, you can use it with any DAW you want, as long as you've got Reason. So, just a thought. I mean, you know, there are a lot of reasons to have Reason, and just making music with it is not the only one. Now, this is going to be a sort of long video so please if this interests you like this video subscribe to the channel now and buckle up because we're about to get into it and I want to show you how to do this but it's not going to be a short video so if you really want to get the most out of it you know hang in there with me through this all right so let's get into this all right here we are in reason and in reason right now I have a very simple uh, track playing at the bottom it's audio that I put together And I've got college drums playing over it. You've heard this a million times, the drums. But just having a little fun. All right, so now I want to be able to have had effects to it. There are many ways to do that. Let's get started building a multi-effects processor first. So we're going to go to utilities, and I'm going to drag out a combinator. And this combinator is basically, this is the secret weapon re that Reason has it. I mean, it really is a secret weapon. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to route it. This is the other part that's really cool in Reason is you have complete control over the routing. I'm going to route it to, I actually went backwards with that, left and right. I'm going to route it to the Master Effects chain, which has nothing going on in it right now. I could technically take this up here and drop it in here if I want to, uh, but I'm going to keep it down here just for the sake of keeping it separate. Actually, you know what? I'll put it on the right so we can really get a look at it while we're doing this. All right, I'll move that over. All right, so I'm going to press tab and see the front here. Now, here is my combinator. It does nothing yet. If I play my music, nothing is happening. But you can see right up here that it is coming into the mixer. It is coming through the audio on this uh, combinator, and it's just going back out because it has nothing to do. Let's go right here to editor, and we are going to get rid of all these controls first. Select them all, press delete. They're gone. We only need one knob, right? Because what we're trying to do is we're trying to emulate transit, which is a one knob system. So let's drop one knob in here. In this case, I've got it set up already to be a vintage XXL. So it's the biggest knob you can get in reason. Unfortunately, I wish there was, I wish I could put my own knobs. Hey, Reason Studios, if you're listening, how about letting us create our own graphics knobs? That would be nice. Anyway. All right. So here we are. Got our knob on the screen. 
Uh, I'll put it right in the middle just for fun. So I like to say like it's a one knob machine. All right. And now what we're going to do is we're going to add the effects that we want to use. First, the cool part here, I'm going to hold down when I put these in, by the way, I'm using shift on every effect I'm dropping in and every effect I'm going to use in this demo is part of reason. Uh, even the base model reason. So you'll be able to use these. They are there for you. Okay. So say I want, I'm thinking I might, might want chorus. I'm probably going to want, uh, maybe a little distortion. Uh, let's see delay. Definitely going to want to filter in here. Maybe I want a little reverb. My phaser is right there. I'll drop that in here too, just uh, as an option. And there's my reverb. Okay. Now, these are the basic, very basic effects that come with Reason. They've been in here since the beginning. I'm going to flip this over here just for aesthetics so it's all red and white. And, you know, I don't know. I just kind of like, I'm, I'm in a symmetry. What can I tell you? Um, all right. I could actually, if I want to, throw in a, in a convolution reverb, or I could go to uh, over here and throw in this, the retro transformer. These are all things that come with reason. So, you know, they're all pretty powerful effects units. And uh, I mean, my favorite, re my favorite, uh, we've got the chorus here, and my favorite reverb is the, uh, the echo. It just, it's just my favorite thing ever, you know? Um, but I can use any of these. All of these effects are so light on the processor, it's crazy. All right. Um, but let's just get into this a little bit here. I'm going to get rid of the ones we're not going to use. Maybe for this particular effect, we'll just go with, um, maybe we'll just use filter um, and we'll use the d delay and chorus. Okay. So these three right here, one, two, and three. I'm going to hit tab so we can see the back. Now, once we're in the back, we can see all these devices. The cool part here, uh, and this is where actually, well, I shouldn't, I don't know if it's the cool part, but this is the part that I kind of, I dig very much about Reason. I now have the capability to wire these up any way I choose, okay? So here's what's coming through the combinator. This is coming into the, the combinator to be the sound. Basically, this is the sound coming in. So I say, I want to start, take that, and drop it first into chorus. So I'll bring it over here, drop it into chorus. And then from chorus, maybe I want to go to, well, go to my filter with that. From my filter, I'll take it to distortion. And then we'll take that to the delay. Now, I could wire these all up and have them just sitting here. Or I could just use what I need. And, you know, that's what I'm doing right now. I'm just using four of these. I could get rid of the other ones, which I'm going to do just because I want to make this kind of as optimal as possible. So, boom. All right. I'm going to hit tab so we go back around in a second. But what we need to do last, so the last one was the delay. Bring that back in. So this seem, may seem a little confusing, but here's the cool part. If I had done this with reason the way that they want you to do it, which is just drop it in. I'm going to delete all these for a second. You don't have to do this wiring. I did it because I wanted you to understand what was happening. If I just go over to my effects and pick the effects I want sort of in the order that I want to bring them in, they will wire themselves up on their own. So for example, like I said, we had a chorus. So let's go over here, let's find my chorus. There's chorus in Flander, drop it in first. That's the first one in line. Now it's wired up like the first one. Let's get the filter, drop that in second automatically wire it up again. And now we're going to do delay. Actually, we'll do uh, distort first. Here it is. This is a fullback distortion. And now we'll throw a delay in here. Okay. So basically, if you're just using it this way and just dropping things in, it's as easy to set up as it would be in uh, a transit. Boom, because they're all wired up now. If I played my music, basically sounds like junk right now because it's, everything is nothing is set so now we've got all these effects going on but this knobs doing nothing right so what we're gonna do now is I'm gonna decide which of these knobs I want to affect my sounds at the time uh, when I turn this knob all I've got to do now is go let's see I'm gonna turn off all the ones I know I don't want on at the moment okay 
So we're going to start, we'll start with delay. Okay, there we go. It's a nice set. Okay, so we want to be able to control the wet balance so we can bring this delay in and take it out. What I'm going to do right now is I'm going to right click wet, or the balance, wet dry balance, right click it, and I'm going to say map to control one, which is this control right here. I can now adjust the threshold right here. Instead of having to adjust the little windy thresholds like the, hour, the knobs on uh, transit, I can go right here and say, okay, I want this to control wet dry. I never want it to go, go uh, above, say, 60-ish. We'll get right as close as we can right there. Hold down your shift key and that will slow your slide so you can get a little finer control. Now what's going to happen is if I go over here and I turn this knob, pay attention to this wet dry knob, you'll see it's at zero right now. And as I turn it up, it goes to only halfway, no matter how high I turn it. That's what I just told it to do. And now watch this. We're already starting to accomplish part of what transit does. Next, what we'd want to do is adjust the filter. This filter will give us that kind of, uh, you know, that nice cutoff resonance type filter. I'm going to put this on low pass 24, okay, because that's a, a good, usually good uh, type of filter, I feel like. Let's see how this is going to sound right now with this on. So I'm not going to want to go lower than 48 and we'll go to, the, to 127 the max. Okay. So right click this knob right here, map this control. But here's the thing here. I want this one to start off very clear and then get muddy as I turn the knob up. So what we're going to do is I'm going to flip these values backwards. To do that, we just drag one arrow to the right. Grab the one on the right, drag it to the left, and as they cross over each other, you'll notice they turn white. That is when they invert, all right? So now I tell it, okay, so the maximum is going to be 127, and minimum is going to be around 30, we'll go with 40, I guess. Hold down shift, get this to 40, like I said. And now notice as I turn this knob here that my frequency is changing. Pay attention to that right there. Boom. Right? Okay. Next, we want to add in the distortion. Now, I'm not going to use a ton of distortion. I'm going to use just a little bit, but let's see what we got here. We got uh, foldback distortion. Let's see the amount. We'll turn that up there. You know what? I've decided I don't even want this here. I don't like it. Um, so I can do one of a couple things. I can replace this or I can get rid of it completely. So what we're going to do is I'm going to go over here and we're going to grab pulverizer. I'm going to bring that in here. I'll just drag it right over the distortion. It will replace it in the chain. Uh, so it's wired up the same place and all that. All right. Now let's see how it sounds with this. <laughs> All right, we're going to deal with this dirt control right here. All right, so we'll do from 50% to about 97. All right, right click this dirt. Again, we're going to map that right to 
the same control. So we'll take it right here, and then we'll take the percentage down right around there, 90, 90%, roughly. This is kind of just a approximate. You get the idea. I'm not uh, trying to apply just a little bit. Let's hear how this sounds. Now this squash is doing a lot here too. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna map this up there to control one. And now one knob controlling two knobs. Actually it's controlling a bunch of knobs, but. Let's lower the amount of squash from maximum down to about 50%. Grab that right there. This is nice right here, isn't it? Guess what we're gonna do? Gonna map that in there too. Isn't that insane? We haven't even touched this chorus, and I'm not sure I even need it. But let's try it out, put it on, and see what it does. Yes. All right, we're gonna take this. Oh, that, that is love right there. Let's map this feedback bar button right here, rather, to the control also. And here, we're gonna map this so that we go from zero is gonna be right in the middle here. And then we'll take this down below zero as we go up. Now the coolest part about this is that you have complete control over what you're adding and what you're not adding. So now we've built this effect, right? And uh, we can do whatever we want. We can add uh, more knobs, we can add switches, we can add whatever, or we can just go like this and uh, hide all the devices and everything else and literally just have one knob showing on the control on the surface of our music that does All that craziness and look down here at your DSP meter you're barely using anything it's not even really on the it's not even really measuring except for blips every once in a while up now what you can do with this once you're done with it is if you just go right over here and hit save okay and I say I want to call this let's put this where I will know where it is here's my demo that's the one we built. And now if I want to, I can take this device and I can duplicate it. 
if I want or loaded another one in. I'm just going to duplicate it for simplicity's sake. Uh, copy device, boom, paste it. I could have just gone rogue duplicate right away, but all right. So now that we've got that in here, it's not hooked up to anything. If I want to, I could just hook this to one device. I'm going to take it and put it right on the drums directly. So I'm going to take my drum out and I'm going to wire that right up here. And I'm going to take my drum in. I'm going to run that right over here. And now, let's leave that on and hide my device. It's going to want to see it. And here we go. Again, I mean, I can go in here, I can add or modify this in any way I want, uh, or this can be sent, put to a send and receive on your mixer. So if I want to do, just take it and go uh, right here, let's scroll over here so I can see this part of the screen a little bit. Mm, there we go. Rather than have it right here, I'm just gonna drag it over so I can get to it easier, see it easier. Um, I can just go right here and say, I want this on my send and return one. And now if I go back to our mixer, press tab again. I'll keep hitting tab if you're wondering what I'm doing to get there. I don't know if I mentioned that, I might have. But uh, you'll notice right here that now we see, there it is on our first effect. It's right here too. And we got a setup up here for the uh, the effect send and then we got a setup right here for the effect section. So now if I wanted to, I could just take this and add it to anything I wanted. Let's turn this up a little. Forgot that I dis disconnected the drums. Let's put them back on here real quick. And now we can send different amounts of each instrument to the effect. And that's basically it. So now using this method, you can get a lot more out of the effects in Reason and create your own custom chains completely using any VST sound effect or any rack extension that you have. And take that all build your own effects and never be limited again and have to buy another plugin like uh, Transit or Tornado if you want. Uh, that's pretty much it. I hope that was helpful. Let me know if this video was helpful to you, uh, please, in the comments. And if you want to get your hands on the effect that I built, which is called Transmorph, this is the one I actually built for myself. Uh, I have nice little graphics and such in here. Plus, I actually took it a step further where I can disable each of the effects from right here so I don't have to have all of them on at once. Uh, and the one little knob right here, same idea as what I did. I will be glad to give you a copy of Transmorph. Uh, just look down below and uh, right underneath the uh, buy me a coffee link, you will find the download link. All right. Uh, and if you want to support the channel, you can buy me a coffee or give me a super thanks or super chat or whatever those things are on YouTube. Uh, that would be awesome. I would appreciate it. Uh, let me know what you think. And if there's something you're looking for, I will help you out. I always do. Have a great day. I'll talk to you soon. Be safe. Bye for now.